let's get Johnny with Jodie. Um, thanks for being a guest on the podcast. Um, and if you just want to introduce yourself on like how we know each other, and a lot of the students might recognise you that are listening anyway, but just sort of introduce yourself. Right, so my name's Jade, and um, I was previously a tutor at East Riding College, and so that's how I met Jodie, and we have quite a bit in common, so we've always kind of got on with each other and talked. Yeah, so this podcast, obviously, with it being Equality and Diversity Month, um, I wanted to sort of touch upon something that we talk about all the time, really, um, but the fact that we both sort of live with inv- invisible conditions um, and a chronic illness, basically. Um, so if you want to sort of talk about your um, condition and then I'll sort of talk about mine and then we'll have a bit of discussion on how the similarities they are and the differences and things like that. No problem. So I have um, epilepsy. I have a specific type called TLE, which is temporal lobe epilepsy. Um, So most people kind of have a rough idea of what epilepsy is, I suppose, is a neurological condition. So I um, experience seizures, um, different types of seizures. I have sort of three different types, some that you would that are visible some that are not um and yeah that's that's pretty much what my condition is <laughs> yeah um and so i have a condition called endometriosis which is when the lining of your womb um sort of sticks to different parts of of your body you know it sticks to your ovaries it's um it sort of spreads in different stages um so obviously a lot of people suffer from period pains and things like that but the main um sort of thing that I suffer with is the fact that I'm in excruciating pain a lot of the time of the month so generally a lot of people fear their period whereas I um want my period to come because that's the only week where I'm not in pain because it's almost like um a relief for my body um so the three weeks leading up to my period is absolute hell um and then so I'm sort of opposite to most, to most women, really. Um, so, yes, yeah, so it's just the cells that normally go on the inside of your um, reproductive system. Mine sort of grow on the outside and float around and stick to different parts of me. So you can have it like on um, your bowels, on um, all sorts of things, your bladder, everything, which is causes pain um, and obviously um, issues with, you know, going to the toilet, all sorts of things like that. And it's you get diagnosed with like, four different stages and you can have um things to sort of laser the cells off and things but once you sort of at past sort of stage four it's it's almost pointless really which i'm at stage four um so just to sort of go into i'll go into like the diagnosis process just while i'm talking so with endometriosis it takes on average seven years for somebody to be diagnosed with it because it's so it's not a lot of gps doctors things like that know about it it's like i mean i got told i don't know how many times that it was ibs i was like it's not ibs i can promise you that i'm not a doctor but i know it's not ibs um but it's actually more common than people realize because they say it's one in ten have it um but i mean if you talk to anyone really someone will probably know somebody that's got it so it's just the fact that nobody knows about you you're not educated on it so that was obviously why i wanted obviously in the same with epilepsy is is everyone knows about epilepsy but actually they don't know the the effects that it has on your life and and the things like that so that was why obviously i wanted to have this conversation because there may be you know like young people that are suffering with periods or they're suffering with anything and they don't know what to do sort of going forward so like how was your like diagnosis process have you had have you had epilepsy all your life or uh, so i was um diagnosed with epilepsy in 2012 so right towards the end of 2012 um my seizure started in the april so at the beginning of that year i had an accident okay in my head so that is what um eventually came out that is what triggered my my epilepsy unfortunately it damaged part of my temple lobe but um so i started having the seizures in the april and the thing with epilepsy is it, it can you take it can take about a year to diagnose it it depends on um the type of epilepsy that you have what's causing it and also sort of like whereabouts in the brain it is and the thing with epilepsy is it's not just like one condition a bit like you and there's the stages there are various different types of epilepsy and so it can be like misdiagnosed and when i first started having um, the seizures they thought it was just um until someone actually physically witnessed the physical seizure 
uh, they thought that I was suffering from like really bad migraines and I was passing out with them and they thought that was what was happening because of of obviously hitting my head um, and that went on for quite a while and then I knew something just wasn't right things were getting worse um, and you feel really awful after a seizure and we'll probably talk about that a bit later on but when and then I went back to see my doctor and I said I still don't feel right um, and he was kind of like yeah I'm not happy that with this diagnosis and he sent me back um, and I went to see a different neurologist who was a little bit more kind of um, willing to listen to me and then I had um, some tests I had an MRI um, which I had lots of those before to kind of show where you know the temporal lobe um, and then I had an EEG which is where they put like little electrodes onto your head um, and they monitor your electric like the electrical activity and they flash lights at you and stuff to see if that can trigger a seizure and that kind of thing to see if there is like a dodgy rhythm almost because essentially a seizure is um, where your electrical current in your brain misfires and that's what causes it so wow. I had all that and then they decided sort of at the end of that year um, that actually they did think that it was um, epilepsy and so then they diagnosed me with TLE yeah right yeah so so quite similar in the fact that you know it's take, it takes a while doesn't it and yeah. and that's sort of something that I've I've taken from you know like if young people talk to me about um like if they're in pain or if they're, they're struggling with the periods and they're like well I've been to the doctor and they don't say anything I'm like go back just keep going back because um, something similar happened in regards to epilepsy. My mum had um, had a stroke a number of years ago um, and she'd never have had epilepsy and she started having seizures. I remember um, one day she was, um, I, I always laugh when I tell this story, but it's really not funny. Um, but she was out hanging the washing out and um, that was when she had her first one. And I didn't know until I went in the front room and she was like laid on the floor. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, and we took a, she had another one um i think it maybe a week or so later and we phoned an ambulance and they were like uh yeah like she's okay it's sort of gone now and when we she had a when she had a third one we took her to the hospital she actually went to the hospital and then like you said until they saw that seizure they were like we can't diagnose with anything yeah. and i was just like that's mad that someone's like you know you've got to physically see it um and she had that through obviously from she has developed epilepsy from having the stroke so um a lot of people i think think that you're born with epilepsy don't they and think that you've had it like all your life um but obviously like accidents and things like that can you can also um and this is this surprised me because when i was diagnosed i kind of did a lot of my own research and looked into it myself to see what yeah. was going on um because there wasn't a lot of information about you know my diagnosis i was told here's a seizure diary and we'll make you an appointment to see the epilepsy nurse within three months and that was it um, and they started me on some medication and that was kind of it so I did my own research and you can actually develop epilepsy at any point in your life you don't have to have an accident it can just happen um, yeah. and there's like critical periods in age where you can um, develop it and stuff so you can just get it like for no reason whatsoever um, at some point in your life so yeah is people don't really realize that I don't think no no I didn't realize that definitely not I thought I obviously thought that you either were born with it or you'd have to have like um, a trauma to your head or your brain or whatever and, and that's sort of what brought it on so that is interesting isn't it that you know anyone can and obviously that's why I, it's a good thing that we have these discussions because you know like you say anyone can just wake up sort of one day and, and have it can't they and yeah. um, sort of so something that I want to sort of touch upon in regards to both of us is the effects on like daily life because I know obviously me and you are friends on um social media and things like that and yeah. you know we both sort of support each other because and we're both quite open in the fact that we like to promote sort of awareness of it and we talk about our journeys and we share on social media when we're having bad days and we call it struggle street don't we, <laughs> we, do, yeah. we struggle street yeah struggle definitely street. Um, and obviously when you worked at the college you know we we supported each other then and we almost sort of recognized I probably think the cost we both recognized when each other was struggling because we knew that even though you you put your lippy on and you were yeah. smiling it, it was you know, you, yeah. yeah you could see that so that's um how does it affect your daily life um in regards to when you're having sort of a bad a struggle bad street day. moment struggle street days <laughs> uh, it depends I think it will it impacts my life every day regardless of whether it's like a good day or a bad day um and on the good days it's just things like I, I have real bad memory problems so I forget things quite easily or I'll repeat myself because I think did I say that did I not um yeah. 
and just just like little things like that obviously I have to take medication which has like side effects every day anyway and I do get really bad um, headaches and part of that's the epilepsy and part of that's the the injury um yeah. so there's, there's things like that and also obviously um because you have to be seizure free for a year bef- um to be able to drive I have to, had to give up my driving license and so that's been a journey through the years of getting it back giving it back up getting it back giving it yeah. back so there's that where sometimes, I mean, at the minute we're all in now, so we're all locked in, but um, where, oh, I just want to pop to to the shop and actually I can't really do that because I can't just get in the car and go. So that, that's kind of just like the everyday impact, I suppose. And then on the bad days, like if I've had a seizure, um, I'm just, it's, it's exhaustion. Like I can't quite, it's hard to describe because it's not just like you feel tired, like kind of, in your mind your whole body aches it's your moving hurts walking hurts um eating just difficult like focusing's out of the window watching netflix is gone you just i just like to sleep um i probably spend half of my life in bed sleeping and, and taking naps and things because i'm so tired yeah um it impacts on like my ability to be like a mom and things like that because um, sometimes you know we can't go out and do things or actually you're gonna have to have a takeaway for your tea because I can't go and cook and yeah um, we've had to make adaptions to our house so things which sounds really ridiculous but things like making sure that we have like had a shower that turns on from the outside rather than inside so you can't knock it and burn yourself because I've done that before Um things like having a kettle that you don't have to pick up so it just pours do you know like and it's little things like yeah. that that people and don't that, really think about yeah, that, i was just going to say they're the things that people don't realize in aren't they that um you know they're things that are necessary in order to keep you safe mm-hmm. um because obviously you can ultimately you know you can have a seizure you don't you might know what you feel like you know leading up to it or sometimes you might know when it's going to happen but i'm sure that sometimes okay. it just it just happens doesn't and it I, I've had some say like injuries so like I've had a burnt on my back in the shower once um constantly have bruises like on my face and people probably think I get beaten up um mm-hmm. I've burnt my hands with the you know like the kettle when I've been pouring trying to make a drink or whatever all sorts I've burnt my feet on radiators before where my foot has been pushed on it and I always have heating on because I'm always cold so mm-hmm. things like that um and so we did we have done things and made adaptions so that because I spend a fair amount of time at home sort of without my husband because he works as a police officer so he works shifts so it's about making sure that when I am home and I'm on I'm, I mean I say on my own obviously I'm not on my own on my own but like on my own as the adult yeah <laughs> um, that that there's somebody there that there's things in place so that I know that I'm going to be sort of safe and things and do you think I mean you don't have to answer this it might be a bit personal but do you think that it has it affected your relationship in regards to your children or your husband? Um, have you always, you know, I don't know, was you with your husband when you got diagnosed? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, no, I don't think it has to them at all. I think they're all just, you know, used to it. Like the teenager would just happily step over me if I was in the right. way, you know, like to get to his computer or whatever. Do yeah. You know? Yeah. I think he won't care. But, and I think that like Andrew, he's really used to it and he's fine with it. Um, and and he does a lot of practical jokes around it as well. And I know some people would find that offensive, but I find it funny. Yeah. yeah. I think the only way it's impacted on our like relationship or as a family is obviously sometimes we can't go do certain things. But I think as well, it's probably affected me more in the relationship than Andy because I feel like I'm a bit of a burden yeah. and I he has to look after me sometimes. And do you know, like I mean there's nothing more awkward is there then you have to have your husband sitting outside the bathroom while you're in the bath and you have to constantly talk to him so he knows you're not drowning do you know what I mean like things like that and to me that's a really big effect on me but he's not bothered but it's me that feels it if that makes sense yeah yeah and I do think um you know that's something that I I struggle with in regards to obviously past relationships and even relationships you know like with my parents I mean when I when I lived at home I mean, the amount of times that my mum would have to come in in the middle of the night and get me to breathe through the pain. And I used to feel awful because I was just like, you know, and it wasn't that I was calling it. It's the fact that I was screaming in that much pain of a night that, you know, everyone was up anyway because they were like, oh, God, she's off again. So and, you know, and my dad, my dad, 
I remember one holiday we, we went on and I had a really bad flare up and this was before I was diagnosed with what it was it was just we, just, we nobody knew what this pain was that almost like came over me um it must have been like a monster just like you know I was possessed of an evening or something because it's always worse on a night it seems to be um and my poor daddy would like stand my mum would be there rubbing my back like it's okay breathe through the pain like I was having a baby every night <laughs> dad I remember like looking at the at the door and he's like stood there and he's just like looking at my mum like what is this like what is going on and I mean I know it's awkward for, it's awkward for dads anyway in regards to anything to do you know periods and things like that so the fact that he was just stood there listening to me scream at the top of my and some nights honestly it it must have been like I was possessed because I, I do scream at the top of my voice but that's the only way that I can get that like get that pain out um and I just, I, I'll always remember that because it's just, and that was something even, like I say, before I was diagnosed, when I'm, di when since I've been diagnosed, I've not been so bad because I'm like, well, I know what it is and I've got, I, I've got, because I used to think it's in my head. Like I'm, I'm, and doctors would say it's period pains. It, it's not. Like I, I, people, you know, the more, like you said, the research, you've done research and I research it all the time. And the main thing on all these forums that I'm on is you should not be in, in absolute physical pain from a period. Period should not hurt that much that you cannot get out of bed. Yes, sometimes you can have a little, you know, a bit of discomfort, but you shouldn't be able to not get out of bed. And that's what doctors seem to just think well you know you walk I walk around with heat pads physically attached to my to my stomach all the time and they were like yeah it's just period pains no 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 Mr Doctor it's not I'd like you to have this pain for half a day and then you might <laughs> and then you might take it seriously um but I think that's something that I've found you know the most difficult is other people's opinions because we haven't got a broken leg or we haven't got you know a physical disability people don't seem to understand it do they they, so they seem to almost brush it off and because you have a job and you have a house and you know you've got a husband and you know you've got children and all those things it's almost like well you're living a normal life so it can't affect you that much but no one sees what goes on you know behind closed doors do they, no, they do. Um, have, have you had that oh uh, yeah I think that's probably one of the hardest aside from all the physical side of having to like live with epilepsy and deal with the seizures and stuff which are horrendous in themselves it's that I always sometimes not so much anymore I think as I've got as I've got older not so much older but as I've got like used to it and and more comfortable with it I suppose in a sense I'm not as bothered but like I think probably one of the hardest things is that I feel like I always have to justify why yes. I'm why I am the way that I am or feel like I always have to um like really explain it so people understand because there's that worry of um like you know if you're working there's that worry of people are going to think that if you need a, you know if you're taking a day off or whatever and your head's hurting or you're quiet or something or you have a seizure and you need to go home I think people sometimes think that oh whatever she's fine there's nothing wrong with her she look you know they look fine and I think that's 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 the thing is that I always feel like I have to justify to people what is wrong with me and and why you know why I am the way you know why things are the way that they are and I think it's because people can't see it and I've had some really awful experiences of of prejudice and people being um really horrible like I had to go get when they took my driving license off me um I was entitled to like a free bus pass you know like a disabled bus pass um yeah. and so I went to to go and get it give this form in and the woman looked at me and she like and at first I thought, is it in my head that she's looking at me like that? But it wasn't. She kind of looked at me like this, like, and I sat down. And then looked at the form, looked at me again, and she went, well, what's wrong with you? You look all right to me. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't yeah. believe that she's just said that to me. And I was so embarrassed. Where now, I'd, I, you know me now, I'd argue back, wouldn't I? But at yeah. the time, I was just so embarrassed and, and upset by it. I didn't really know, like, like what what to say. And people say it all the time, you know, well, there's not wrong with you, you're not disabled and, and things like that. And I just think, well, I am actually. But it's almost, I almost find it, do you ever feel like you you put, I know we put a lot of pressure on ourselves, but do you feel more pressure to, to do those things? I know I do. I find myself, to, I put a lot of pressure on myself to be the best at, at things because I know that 
this condition affects me in some ways and I do have to have time times off work and I know when I was at school you know a lot of my friends were like god Jodie's off for like some days I'd be off for like two three four days like the week leading up to my period because I could I physically could not get out of bed and that's not me saying oh I didn't want to get out of bed I was tired I physically couldn't my legs do not like the pain goes into my legs and it's that it's that painful that I can't get out of bed and the the painkillers that I take on a daily basis when I'm in that much pain I mean most people would be asleep for weeks on the amount of pain relief that I just have to take to function some days and so when I am in in college or at work and people are like oh you're always so bubbly and positive I feel like I have to be like that because you feel like you have to like almost prove that you're capable yeah yeah I feel that pressure I feel that I need to because it affects me so much and more than anything it affects me more at home because I allow myself to be to be in pain and you know I if it's a weekend I'll allow myself to to sit on the sofa and, and not move on I work out of bed because I'm in that much pain but then I also feel like I have to justify myself by taking that picture and putting it on Instagram and 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 saying look I'm having a bad day I'm going to tell you that I'm having a bad day because I want to spread awareness but I also want to justify why I haven't got out of bed today yeah. And that's a really, for me, that's a sad world that we live in, isn't it? That we feel that in our heads, that we have to justify having a painful day when we're in pain 90% of, of our lives, really. And I think some people sort of, you know, I've had comments made before, I mean, I ignore it now, but about, you know, how if you if you do put things like that on social media, um, then it's because you want some sort of sympathy or you want some sort of attention or something. Yeah. Well, actually, what we want is to raise that awareness so that more people understand it, so we can move away from ever needing to do that, you know, yeah. ever needing to say, actually, I'm really, you know, I'm really struggling today and this is why. More people need to do it, but they don't because there's this whole, oh, it's just for attention. Um, I mean, the best one I ever had was when someone told me I was making it up. That was, that oh. was the, best, the best line I've ever heard in my life. Brilliant, yeah, because you'd do that, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, it is it is really hard. And like I said, the opinions I really wish that I could be one of them people that that doesn't care what other people think. But and me and you, I mean, we're so like these conditions that we've got have made us, you know, the people that we are today, you know, they've made us resilient, they've made us almost able to, you know, take on the world because we have to we have to fight every day just to get through a day and some days yes some days are much easier you know and, and I, you know like today for me is is a is a good day you know I've, I've got up and I've been and I've ridden the horse and I've done a lot of work and I we almost have to take those accomplishments don't we and be like right well done you you yeah. know and bank them up because then the days that are really bad you can be like right okay well I did eight days where I had a really good day and then you know it's but unfortunately we live in a world where people have an opinion on everything don't they um and i think it's con it's conversations like this that hopefully will allow people to you know to take that step back and think hmm, what's going on in that person's life you know is there anything that i can do to help them or even if it's you know if like you say if you're a bit quiet one day at work it doesn't shouldn't be a case of oh, i'm coming home coming over and being like what's wrong with you because you're normally this really bubbly person it's about allowing that person to have that bad day isn't it yeah it is and I think the longer you ha maybe have um a condition or the more familiar you get with it for yourself I think the more gentle you maybe are with yourself not so much to the outside world because like you know even now I'm always wanting to prove that I'm I can do this job and I'm capable of doing it but I think more now when I like you said when I'm at home more well I'm home all the time now but when I'm at home um and I do you know sometimes where before I would probably make myself even more poorly by making you know getting up and and making sure that I was I don't know making a three-course meal and baking bread and doing all these things that I thought everybody needed in this house um well actually they're not fussed what's as long as they've eaten they're not they don't care um yeah. and it, and I am a bit more gentle with myself and I think well do you know what actually I am having a really bad day um I am just gonna lay on the sofa and with you know I don't know a hot water bottle because my ache and watch binge watch Benadorm on Netflix do you know what I mean I am actually going to do that and it's okay to do that um yeah. but there's that divide like you said between how you are at home and how you are out in public and I think that we need to be able to to merge those together yeah, are, to, that's to, who you are 
and the good thing that I found, I mean, obviously, I, you used to work at the college, but something that I found at, find at the college is that it makes such a difference when you work for someone or, or even your partner um, understands it. But I found that if I message my, my boss and say, look, I'm having a really bad day and I've explained my condition to her and, you know, they're all, everybody's aware of, of what I go through on a daily basis. Um, but it makes such a difference, doesn't it, if your employer or, like I say, your partner understands because it it takes that pressure off a little bit, doesn't it? Because I think, I, I mean, I have worked in places where they've been like, Jodie, no, you're not having, like, you can't have a day off, you need to come in, like, we can't cover for you. Or they make my next shift, like, really awkward because everyone's like, oh, why are you off? Like, why did because I can't phone in and be like, so on the 11th of this month, I'm going to have a really bad day because I don't know. Yes, I can I can manage it myself, and I know generally when I'm going to be in most amount of pain, but I don't know if I'm going to wake up and I'm going to be fine or if I'm going to wake up and be in absolute agony. Yeah. So it makes a difference, doesn't it, if you've got that support behind you in regards to work and things like that. And I do. I've always been, you know, I've been quite lucky um, in that I've had, you know, people that I work with and employers who have been understanding about it. Um, and I think the key thing is really there, and something that I would always advise anybody with any kind of, um, chronic illness and things and you know epilepsy particularly is just be honest about it like and there's this whole thing of as as there is sort of similar with you really because you know we don't talk about periods and we don't talk about female reproductive systems yeah. like, how could we ever um, and we don't talk it's true though isn't it? we don't it's talk about that blows my mind I mean I, I talk about it all the time I'm like <laughs> I didn't do <laughs> I think that's good but you know we don't talk about um, epilepsy because there's this stigma that it's actually you know it goes back years and years and it's things like you know you're possessed um or that you it's a mental um a mental illness that it's not a physical and all like loads of different things and there's such a stigma that um obviously it's a learning disabilities and all this and so people are fearful and I've been in that position where I think you know, do I tell them that I've got epilepsy or do, where now I'm like, sir, let me tell you all before we start, this is what's wrong with me. This is what you need to do if a seizure happens. Um, and I think if my, that, that if we were all more open and honest and we all um, just accepted it for being a part of us, because it is, you know, it's just a part of us and talked about it more and we're really honest with your employers and really honest with your friends. Um, I think they're more understanding. It's when you try and hide it, I think, and, and you, that that's an issue then you know if you if you've had a seizure or when you ring in and say oh, I'm sick today because I've been sick and then two days later you ring up and you say oh, I've got a headache and then a week later you ring up with something else it looks that that's worse than saying look I have epilepsy this is what happens to me you know and, yeah absolutely that is that's definitely something that because that was like I say when I was at school because I wasn't diagnosed at that point I was just phoning up with my or my mum was phoning up and being like you know she can't come in today she's in too much pain they're like but what what's she in pain with they were like well we think it's her periods but like we like we don't know we know it's linked to a period and you know the conversations that my mum must have had with with the school and the school were like but she's got exams this year she's got this and you know I knew that I knew that I had that pressure but I also knew that it wasn't possible, you know, it, it was not possible for me to, I couldn't have gone and sit in the exam hall and done an exam and been in that much pain, Jesus, yeah. I've just been like, what are you doing making all that noise in the corner? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, it it's definitely makes a difference, one, if you're open about it and your employer is, is supportive about it, or your school or college or whatever, wherever you are. Um, so something, I know we've been a bit dreary, but I'd like to know if you have like a positive on having epilepsy I know that obviously but it's something that you know you're going to live with now so have you sort of found a positive in regards to it I think um it has made me more sort of a more of an understanding person I think it's actually made me a better tutor um in a way I think for that pastoral side because I, I think I have more sort of empathy when when something is wrong or when somebody is feeling rubbish or that you know they are unwell and, and it's maybe not something that you can see and things like that and I think I do have a more um gentle understanding of the world I think I think I'm more accepting than I maybe was before um you know I think less ignorant to hidden disabilities and I think definitely because before I was quite like uh 
like epilepsy, I thought oh, you have to be born with it, don't you? Or it's linked yeah. to learning disabilities or or things like that. Um, you know, and I'll hold my hands up and say I was one of those people. And I think now I see things from a very different perspective. Um, so yeah, I do think I do think that it it's made me probably a bit of a better person. Um, as much as I don't like having it, I think it has, and I think as well like doing things like this. Um, doing because I obviously have a blog as well Jodie's featured in it aren't you Jodie? I have. <laughs> but doing things like this being really open about it writing that book all that kind of stuff I think um has made me has, has had a positive impact so I can't get rid of it so you might as well do something positive with it. Yeah yeah and I think that's that's like some the sim similar with me is I it's made me a much stronger person but it's also made me more empathetic like you say you know when students come to speak to me about things or um you know if somebody is if i because obviously in my role i see the students sort of first thing in the morning so i notice the, the smaller things about people you know if they normally come in and they say morning to me and then they don't say morning to me i'm like hmm, i wonder why whereas before i maybe it would have been you know all the other things in regards to my job have been running around my head and i wouldn't I maybe wouldn't have have done that I'd have probably passed it off but I do think having this condition has made me think well maybe they're struggling a little bit and maybe it's just something going on that they're, they're not sure of or or they don't know why these things are happening to, to them but the main positive for me is that it's made me a much stronger person because like I say we have some days it is a struggle to get out of bed so if I get out of bed and brush my hair and put some clothes on and turn my computer on then for me that's an accomplishment and it's about finding the small accomplishments that you've done I think when you've got something that debilitates your life the way that our conditions do yeah um so yeah and finally Jade I ask everybody at the end of the podcast to give a top tip so I'd like your top tip for if anybody is struggling themselves or if they know somebody that is struggling with epilepsy or any chronic illness my top tip would probably be well two top tips the first one is always take a nap okay if you're tired take a nap can't beat a nap and the second one would be you know just just earn it accept it don't be ashamed of it you know don't hide the fact that you've got a disability or a chronic illness do you know what it's part of who you are um and just be just be honest and open about it do you know what I mean? And if somebody is awful to you, so what? Stand up to them and, and do you know, you'll feel better for it. Hiding it is almost like you've got something to be ashamed of and you haven't at all. No. If, anyone, if anyone's awful to you, me and Jodie have got your back, so we're on it. <laughs> yeah, we have. We have got your back. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, and obviously, if I get any questions or anything, then I'll like pass them on to you and we can sort of help any students that want any help. But thanks so much for joining me. Have and I'll speak to you soon.